What's up, it's Emilio. So as you have seen or maybe haven't, Apple announced the new GPU option in their MacBook Pro. And I'm sure, you know, there's some headlines saying it's up to 75% faster and it's just this incredible new GPU option. It's a little pricey as well, but you know, for the performance, it's a great deal, right? Well, I think there's some caveats here that we have to talk about. So let's just get started. So any laptop like the MacBook Pro that charges with USB-C has a maximum power limit. These things don't have, you know, massive brick chargers around that can carry two, 300, even more watts than that to really let all the components breathe and, and have as much power as they absolutely need. So that's, you know, on, on one hand, that's the negative, but on the positive end, you have a single universal charger that almost everyone at this point has and is clearly the standard for the future. But in order to achieve that, you have to have components run lower than they really would like to. For example, the CPU in the MacBook Pro is an H-series 9th gen Intel processor, and that's a 45 watt chip. Uh, so keep that in mind, 45 watts on one hand. And the GPU, the 5500M that was previously the highest option they had was an 80 watt GPU. So combine those together, you have 125 watts of just the CPU and GPU, not even all the other components, let's focus on just those. They obviously can't run at that amount of power, so they have to lower their performance, and they have to lower their clocks and adjust their wattage and all of that to make sure that they run within their spec. And specifically, that's the 96 watts that the, the charger included can handle. I think sometimes you can go a little above it and end up with uh, a battery slowly discharging, but most of the time it's right within that limit. So enter stage right the 5600M, being fit into a laptop that is already power constrained. Uh, and now it does have a TDP down mode of 60 watts, and this will make it perform, as AMD says, similarly to the 2060 Max-Q. So that's just something to keep in mind. So for the six to $700 price increase, by choosing this option, at least in the US, is this part actually worth it? Well, let's take a look at pretty much the only concrete number that we have right now, and that is the data on Apple's website. So if you look into this a little bit further, that's 40% faster. And if you've noticed on Apple's website, a lot of the times it does hit those numbers, but usually that's an up to amount, like up to 40% faster. So my guesstimate here, and we don't have any concrete numbers coming out just yet. Of course, no one has these laptops yet. I'm thinking it's gonna be between 30 and 40% faster, which is wonderful. That's a great increase in GPU power. I'm not discounting that at all. But for six to $700, depending on which model that you're choosing, is it worth 30% to 40% more GPU power? And I think that's a, that's a hard sell. If you're a professional user and you're gonna be utilizing all those powerful components in the laptop, then I think the 5500M model should work for most, if not you know, 99% of the users using the 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you're doing mission critical work, you need every last drop of performance, then the 5600M could be worth it in that circumstance. The 60 watt TDP down limit that it has is gonna significantly reduce performance compared to what it could be running at, which would normally be the 75% faster that you're seeing online. It's not gonna be able to hit those numbers, unfortunately. So that's not the only thing I want to talk about today. The other thing is as we you know delve into the future more, these laptop parts, unfortunately, are not gonna get a lot smaller, short of Apple releasing some of their own a series chips in the MacBook Pro, we'll see. Until then, we have to deal with what we have, which is Intel and AMD. They make wonderful parts in these machines, but they take a lot of energy to run. The USB-C spec should include higher wattage amounts than 100 watts. That way, we could have laptops that when we want to use them as desktop replacements on the charger, we have something that can actually hit its performance numbers with you know, a small brick charger that is a standard compared to having something like a razor blade, which has, you know, a proprietary charging port or some of the old XPSs, which have the old barrel type chargers. Obviously we don't want to go backwards and, and have those barrel chargers, but we also don't want to be power constrained in our laptops. So like every product, there's going to be advantages and disadvantages, but I'm hoping that as we move into the future, we somehow overcome these challenges because these, Parts are just so powerful, and it would be wonderful if we had a laptop that could just be thin, light, you know, the, the dream laptop that has everything that we want in it, but we're just not there yet. And if you're looking at the new 16-inch MacBook Pro option, 
just keep that in mind. Again, it's still a great upgrade, 30 to 40%. That's wonderful, but it is not what it could be running at. And the same thing with the CPU, and if you're using both at the same time, it will not be able to hit those numbers. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave a comment down below, drop a like, all that great stuff. Subscribe to my channel, and let's get a conversation going down in the comments. I'm so curious to know what your thoughts are. Uh, ask me questions. I'll answer as fast as I possibly can. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Peace out.